Good morning, back at it with Danny. Um, I ended up getting to the point where I started messing around with the drive lines and the front drive line that came off the truck is the one that got reused. The rear drive line uh, was out of a third gen 4Runner. I picked it up when I got that e-locker. It was a CV uh, <clears throat> already being used for the rear. I thought, hey, that's a score, it's rad. And I kind of thought about the flange thing, but I was like, ah, it won't be an issue. Anyway, I had the drive shaft built, I got home, and what ended up happening was I have two of these flanges, which I'm pretty sure is an 05 plus e-locker. It's got the fat pinion spline, so. <clears throat> anyway, this flange works on the drive line, but it does not work on the transfer case. So, uh, I started drilling uh, one of the other flanges last night and got like part way through it before I realized I was drilling the wrong freaking flange. So what I'm going to do today now is drill the right freaking flange. Bunch of drill bits. Mini walk A. So I'm gonna probably just put this on time-lapse here because it's not like drilling and grinding super exciting and I hate doing it too. So here we go. So what's going on right here is we're basically just uh, marking and step drilling this extra flange. Uh, the reason I ended up using multiple bits here was because the flange is thicker than my step bit. And I kind of wanted to make sure that these holes stayed true to the other flange. And again, part of the reason I did this was just to save a few dollars. There are multiple drilled flanges out there, uh, but it looks like the only company selling those currently is a company that I don't do business with. So uh, I take five minutes here and just redrill these flanges to match. It's kind of a hassle. Uh, it's annoying when engineers have to continue to change the stupid bolt pattern, dude. Just leave it alone what I ended up doing here this is adapting that third gen forerunner double card in joint that particular flange on the drive line matches the pinion flange from the 05 plus e-locker stuff that I had so it's like there's just really no rhyme or reason with you know why you're changing these diff flanges and things like that but anyway that's kind of like the long story about what went on here I'm just trying to keep these holes true and not get them too far off. Those two flanges are centered together with the clamps, obviously, and then I have a centering device, which was a bearing or a socket in there, keeping those flanges true. That was freaking exciting, huh? All right, either way, there's my flange, still drilled. Works with that drive line now. So now we can go ahead and get the drive lines bolted up. We are ready to rock and roll on that guy. So yeah, here we go. We're gonna get these drive lines installed, so. Got that flange dealt with. It's amazing how much easier it is drilling holes in steel when you have new bits. I sort of smoked out old ones, so. We're gonna go ahead and get these drive lines in now. So, uh, there's the case. All right, so. What goes on, obviously, is the case. Flange will go on. You got a flange washer that goes on there. And then we'll have the stake nut that goes on there. So, good rule of thumb on doing one of these jobs is putting these flanges on here is you want to, you want to put a little silicone on the inside of the flange right here so it seals up the uh, splines when you go to put this guy in. Toyota ended up on the later transfer cases, like the V6 cases and stuff. There's actually another little seal that rides inside of the end of the flange here. So I'm just going to go put a little bit of glue on here. And then we are going to go ahead and get this flange installed. can't see that. 
Something like that. Anyway. You want to go ahead and lube the lip of the seal right here. That way you aren't dry starting the seal. Washer. He's nuts. I got the ugga dugga treatment and we'll stake that bitch and let him be done. Alright. Shebang. All right, so what we're gonna do here is get the drive line on. Um, what I recommend doing is when you've got one of these double card and CV joints is put the non-CV end on first. Um, Cause what can happen is if the weight of the drive line sags onto the CV, it can actually damage it. Ask me how I know. That. Okay, so the front is real is the same as the back. Silicone on the flange, lube that bad boy. Send her home. Should be good. Because of the drive line thing, I can't put the non CV end up first, unfortunately. So let's get this guy up in here. Yeah. All right.
right, so no really rocket science going on right here. These double carden joints can be damaged. If you drop weight on them, it will damage that center bearing. And because of the dual case cross member here, this drive line needs to be installed with the carden joint first. Otherwise, you won't be able to clear the drive line on the cross member. So what I end up doing is just placing that CV up there and it will sit on the cross member, get the front end started, and then go ahead and button up the CV side of it. This particular cross member actually ends up being quite a bit easier to deal with than the bud built on the other truck. It makes that CV flange a little bit easier to access. So just kind of another point for Sky's cross member here. Yeah, I mean, not much really to say here, just kind of some basic driveline stuff. I make a habit of collecting those driveline bolts. Basically, they come with factory Loctite. If yours aren't Loctite, make sure that you Loctite them. And then a little bit of silicone in there keeps those things from sealing up or make sure that the flange will seal up. Uh, some of the later flanges on the later transmission transfer cases actually use a second seal in the inside of that uh, splined area. This early stuff doesn't, so make sure you put a little bit of silicone in there and make sure you stake that nut and you should be good to go for plenty of years of trouble-free service. All right, so the drive shafts are in there and they're done, we're ready to go there. Um, I've just been kind of messing around with the engine harness routing here and getting that all kind of squared away. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get the thermostat in. I'm just kind of getting the IAC hoses uh, dealt with and stuff. So and this is your idle air hose. It just runs down to the IAC that's tucked, tucked down there. The 22R sometimes, and it may not be all the time, will have an issue with kind of what they call a temp overspike when the vehicle kind of is first temping up. I'm not sure what's causing that. If it has something to do with like the throttle body water draining onto the onto the T-stat and keeping it closed or what exactly is going on. The fix to that, again, this is old school Toyota lore, is uh, what they call a dual stage thermostat. So it's got two openings in there and that keeps water flowing through there all the time, I guess, so it doesn't want to do the, the over spike thing. Here's your part number. Uh, I can't find a and mind you, I didn't do a shitload of digging either. I can't find the actual cross for that, what it, what it actually went for. Uh, the website that I used wouldn't show me. Some of the other websites, the, the number will come up, but it won't show you an app. Uh, of course, here's your O-ring. So, that's just a little note if you're having a weird uh, temp issue with your 22R. I also, especially on Toyotas, domestics are all trash anyway, but uh, on an import car, get the factory thermostat. It's just cheap insurance. You save like $6 on a part and then it blew your car up. Is that really what you want to do with your $3 parts house thermostat? Probably not a good idea. So uh, just spend the extra money. I mean, the reality is when you see these pieces side by side with like an aftermarket part, uh, they're just trash. Anyway, if you want to like risk your car for $2, do that, otherwise stick to the OE thermostat. That wraps up another episode of Snail Racing. Stay tuned for the next episode when Nav finally gets Danny Bonaducci running. Or does he?